Hello guys, welcome back to Bear Recaps. Today, I will recap a 2010 British comedy movie named Wild Target, make sure you are ready for some spoilers. The movie starts with a tall man entering a building where a man is tossed down moments later, after which he leaves as if nothing happens and notifies his client that he's dealt with the matter. As a result, he receives the location of his payment and goes to fetch the money while complaining about how the client pays him. Half now, half later. Back at home, we can see he is taping the cut money together while listening to French teaching radio where we know his name is Victor, a 54-year-old professional hitman. The following day, when a man is examining a diamond in his workshop, Victor casually walks in with a pistol. As he is asked for his identity, he slowly adjusts the noise suppressor and introduces himself in French, confusing the man, after which he ends his target's life without any emotion on his face and is about to leave. However, a voice suddenly calls his name in English, but much to Victor's surprise, it's just a parrot. Victor points his gun at the bird. I love you. He changes his mind, deciding to take the parrot with him. On his way home, the parrot makes a wolf whistle to a woman besides, making Victor walk away embarrassingly. Later, he goes to visit his mother, who suspects his son is a homosexual as he still doesn't have a partner in his 50s, which is denied by Victor. His mother makes a collection of newspaper clippings about his career achievements as his birthday gift. In addition, she still urges him to find a girl otherwise no one can perpetuate the family's legacy. Before Victor leaves, he brings the parrot in as a gift to his mother, who doesn't seem to like the present. Back at home, a lonely Victor pretends he's having dinner with someone in a restaurant while speaking French. The scene then shifts to a woman riding a bicycle across the road, causing car collisions and she proceeds to cross a square with a sign saying no cycling. She ignites a small roll of firecrackers and throws it onto a lawn, distracting the guard's attention, after which she manages to sneak through the gate without getting noticed. She cycles across the hallway of the empty museum and stops at the restoration department. A man is concentrating on his painting inside, but the woman jokingly jumps out, scaring him. From their conversation, we know the woman is called Rose, who cooperates with the painter to scam collectors with fakes. As the man Jerry shows his worry about their plan, Rose induces him to stick with it while flirting with him, causing Jerry to be shaking and give in quickly. The simp soon shows her the painting which greatly amazed Rose, asking where the copy is. That is the copy. Rose is taken aback seeing how the duplicate looks identical to the real one. Jerry smugly tells her the copy is still wet and Rose approves of his work with a satisfied smile. While Victor is ironing his suit at home, the TV news is broadcasting that the Rembrandt self-portrait is purchased by a private Russian buyer. Elsewhere, Rose is practicing her negotiating trick where she raises the price at the last moment, assuming the buyer won't accept it, so she can put it back in her case and switch the fake. Following that, she pretends to compromise and proceeds to close the deal. Wearing a wig, she confidently meets with the buyer Ferguson. After they confirm the authenticity of the artifact, they show her the agreed amount of £800,000. Rose carries out her plan raising the price to £900,000, which visibly annoys Ferguson. But what Rose totally didn't expect is that Ferguson accepts the price seconds later, making her panic and still taking the painting back nervously. When the others are confused, she raises to £1 million in the heat of the moment. Ferguson is much infuriated and intimidates her at gunpoint. But Rose has managed to do her trick, apologizing she was just joking. She soon takes out the copy and gets away with the money. On getting out, she quickly throws away the wig and drives off. On the other side, Ferguson is overjoyed to finally own the masterpiece. But when he touches his nose with the hand that just touched the painting, his men remind him of the paint. He then realizes the one in front of him is a fake and Rose has already switched it. Not long after, Victor receives a call telling him he has a new client. Rose returns the painting to Jerry and gives him a bag of money, but Jerry still reminds her of the risk, which is dismissed by Rose. In the following scene, we can see Victor start following Rose on the street. As Rose walks into a crowded market, she begins stealing stuff from the pedestrian and stores. Finally, when Rose is seen walking into a changing room, and Victor confirms her by the stolen stuff on the ground, he shoots at the room, eliminating the person inside. However, when he walks out, Rose still walks ahead of him, not carrying anything she just stole, which makes him realize he just eliminated the wrong person. Shortly after, Rose takes off her headscarf, which turns out to be a dress she just stole. She walks into a restaurant as Victor watches her from afar. She's completely out of control. 
The waiter seems to be Rose's acquaintance, and she changes right behind the counter. Victor notices a customer hugging another waiter, realizing it's a gay restaurant. And when the guy comes up to him, he nervously leaves after seeing Rose walking out. Finally, when it's getting dark and Rose is alone, Victor pulls out his pistol again. Rose enters a hotel, where the receptionist knows her as well and tries to flirt, but Rose doesn't give him a chance. What do you weigh? In the meantime, Victor goes to the opposite building and has an angle to spy on Rose. While Rose is taking off her clothes on her bed, Victor is also assembling his rifle preparing to finish the job. When he aims at Rose and is seconds away from pulling the trigger, the receptionist guy shows up, and the two are about to have some bedtime exercise. Victor sets up his equipment to eavesdrop on them, but he is clearly not ready for what he's going to hear. With the sound still going on, he cleans his weapon and plays chess with himself, but ends up falling asleep. When he wakes up the next morning, Rose is already preparing to leave. He raises his gun and watches her casually stealing again, he finds himself smitten by this unique woman. Victor tells his mother about this, and she thinks it's a big mistake since the family reputation will be ruined. During the conversation, Victor finds the parrot has been brutally murdered. The mother urges him to apologize to the client and finish the contract for free. Therefore, Victor secretly follows Rose again to a parking building, waiting for a chance. Somewhere, a young man Tony is smoking on his break from car washing. When Victor is about to shoot Rose, Ferguson's bodyguard shows up, also trying to end Rose's life. At that very moment, Victor turns to kill the man saving Rose. He runs up to hit another shot, making sure the man is dead before kicking the weapon away. He tells a startled Rose to get in the car, but he starts questioning his own actions. What am I doing? What am I doing? It turns out there's another Ferguson's bodyguard Mike, hiding in the vehicle. He makes both of them get off the car and is going to take their lives. However, it's actually Tony shooting Mike while Rose just passed out from the gunshot, but Victor doesn't know who he is. Tony explains he saw they were getting killed, so he intervened using the gun on the ground, even though he never touched a gun before. Victor convinces Tony to hand him the revolver and knocks Mike out, as Rose also regains her consciousness. The two drag Mike out of sight, and Victor is about to finish Mike with a knife, but Tony stops him saying they have enough time to make a run for it, no need to kill another man. Victor seems to agree with him, but after sending Tony away, he bends down again, about to kill Mike. Just then, Rose comes in saying she's scared outside, stopping Victor again. When she is crying about the horrific attack, Victor is holding the knife hesitantly. But when she turns around, Victor backs down and pretends he's just listening. While complaining about Ferguson's ruthlessness, she starts searching the dead bodyguard's belongings. Victor grabs his gun, wanting to sneak away. But he doesn't go unnoticed when Rose chases up saying she needs his protection, which is turned down by Victor. Rose pleads with tears in her eyes. You're like a mighty ancient oak. Victor can't resist the woman snuggling close up to him, and Rose pays him half of the money for a down payment. As they are driving to leave, Victor lies about his identity saying he is a private detective. Their car suddenly gets shot from behind by Mike. Victor tells Rose to back up to run Mike over, but she steps on the accelerator instead, ending up running into Tony who happens to walk toward them. Tony gets picked up and while Rose is panicking, Victor steps on her foot and they break through the barrier, managing to run away from the scene. Victor brings them to a luxury hotel, saying it will be a safe place since the killers will check those cheaper ones. He wants to order three rooms, but Rose insists that they just need one room for better protection. However, when they just enter their room, it's revealed that Ferguson lives right next to them, and he actually owns the place. In their room, Victor starts to reprimand Rose for her incautious behavior, saying three people living in one room will draw attention. Rose is annoyed by his preaching and bickers with him. Later the day, Victor apologizes for his unpleasant words, easing their tension. But not long after the two again get into another slight altercation, and Rose leaves to drink with a young bartender. On the other side, Ferguson is furious about Mike's incompetent handling of the mission. Meanwhile, a drunk Rose mistakes Ferguson's room for hers and knocks on the door, getting his attention. Fortunately, Victor behind takes her to their room before Ferguson opens his door and apologizes for knocking on the wrong one. Rose puts the stolen boots outside the room to be cleaned before she goes to bed. 
The next morning, Rose and Victor go to have breakfast and Tony is taking a bath. Ferguson meets with another hitman Dixon and explains the situation. Once Mike describes Victor's appearance, Dixon immediately recognizes who he is, commenting that he and Victor are the two most expensive hitmen in the field. Actually, uh, he's a little bit more expensive than you are. <laughs> Emotional damage! When Mike comes out of the room, he sees his missing boots in front of him. He sneaks in with a gun and hears someone in the bathroom. As he quietly opens the door, he tries to drown Tony after snatching a cigarette. However, Tony suddenly pulls him into the tub and manages to get the gun. Tony says he is just a peaceful ordinary person while shaking like a leaf. Take a deep breath. I am ah! Tony tells him to put his ear on ice and the doctor can snitch it back. The three quickly run out of the hotel to their car. Ferguson just sends Dixon away and sees Mike runs out with an ear in his hand. Seeing their targets just drive by right in front of them, they start to follow up closely behind. Victor and Rose change seats since Rose just stole the car two days ago and is not familiar with it. The two cars start racing down the street. And Victor almost runs over a baby pram. A baby. Keep going, we're bigger. Fortunately, the mother pushes her baby away just in time. Mike is driving too fast to turn and ends up throwing Ferguson out of the windshield. After they lose the chase, Victor tells them he has a safe place to go. Is it as safe as a hotel? I'm ignoring them. Later, they go into a service station as Rose requests to pee. Moments later, Rose runs out of the store with snacks in her arms telling them to run while the clerk yells at her and chases behind. They manage to get away and Rose starts complaining about the price. Victor scolds her for the reckless behavior, but Rose seemingly already gets used to him. The safe place Victor mentioned is actually his home. He settles them down providing them room and clean sheets. In a hospital, Dixon assures the seriously injured Ferguson that he will find them out. At midnight, the noise from Rose's room keeps Victor awake. So he goes to her room questioning what she doing at 2 a.m., Rose explains she tries to turn the bed because she sleeps facing south. There, due south. Why didn't I think of that? The next morning, Victor wakes up seeing Rose digging in the garden, which greatly infuriating him. Rose says she just tries to plant some flowers as a thank you and storms off. And the two get into an argument where Rose points out he doesn't have a life like a normal human. But Victor doesn't seem to comprehend what it means, so Rose just gives up and walks away. Later, Victor trims his bonsai tree but cuts off all the leaves at the end. He then goes to talk to Tony, who is having a bath. He supposes he has been sexually distracted by Tony recently, which is quite confusing, he said. What's your first thought? My dwarf illness. I could graft it onto the rubber plant. I won't disturb you any longer. Dixon visits the expert, and his partner Fabian forces the guy to write down anyone who is capable of copying paintings. After obtaining some names, Dixon stops Fabian from shooting the man. But when the man laughs with relief, Dixon shoots him with a satisfying and creepy smile. At night, Rose comes to Victor apologizing for her harsh words and says she can't sleep due to toothache. Victor says he doesn't have any pill here, but he can massage her feet. Are you serious? Oh, you really have a feel for this. While receiving the relaxing massage, Rose confesses that she really enjoys getting protected by Victor. When she falls asleep, a hand is gently caressing her cheek. But when Rose opens her eyes, she sees an old lady holding a knife, causing her to scream and dodge the attack. Tony opens the door but closes it quickly before the knife is thrown at him, after which Rose runs out and locks the door. The two tell Victor there is a crazy lady inside and Victor immediately knows it's his mother. I've got everything under control. Victor tells him to sleep in the other room and goes in to talk with her. Rose says she's in love now and tells Tony to get in the bed, but soon Tony realizes she's talking about Victor. The next morning, Victor sends his mother back when Rose gazes at him lovingly. Elsewhere, Fabian barges into a painter's place inquiring about who paints the fake. But the man tells him the painter is already dead. Dead? When? 300 years ago. Fabian then takes out his knife and the man gives out Jerry immediately, after which Dixon Hello. comes in and eliminates the painter. Later, in Victor's place, the lights suddenly go out, alerting him. However, it turns out to be a birthday surprise prepared by Tony and Rose, who know the birthday from his old room. 
Victor is touched and the three proceed to have a good time that night, where Victor lets go of his usually serious and strict image. When they wake up in the living room the following day, the place is in a mess. Did you do that? No, you did. Victor brings a sleeping Rose back to her bed. After he takes off the heels, the two look at each other with loving eyes. What do you weigh? The two then have some aggressive cuddling to do. Days later, Victor starts to care about the living room's decoration. Meanwhile, Rose sneaks into Victor's room, going through his personal possessions. Just then, Victor comes back to the room, and Rose quickly hides behind a cabinet. Victor takes out a parrot specimen from the bottom of the wardrobe and steps out. After that, Rose goes to check the wardrobe and finds the birthday gift from Victor's mother. She discovers a gun that seems to be a gift from Victor's deceased father for Victor's first kill. Moreover, there are pictures with crosses on them, and to her dismay, she finds her own picture amidst them. Victor seems to like the parrot a lot and wants to show it to Rose, who is actually about to flee through the window, assuming her life is in danger. But just then, Victor and Tony come to her, saying they have something to show her. She is even more terrified when Victor and Tony blindfold her saying there's a surprise. Don't be afraid. It'll be over in no time. As they walk downstairs, Rose suddenly hits them with her bag and runs away. Don't shoot! It can blow up in your face! You're a liar! And you're a killer! And you're a thief! You're made for each other! Rose curses Victor for being a hypocrite and leaves the house. Victor tells Tony if he leaves the house, Dixon will probably go after him and kill him. Therefore, Tony asks Victor to start training him. Victor then starts to teach Tony to assemble a pistol blindfolded. On the other side, Rose goes to Jerry, only to find him dead. But what's worse is that Dixon is also waiting there, he takes away her gun and intimidates her for Victor's address. Tell me, and I'll cut off his finger and make you swallow it. Dixon is really something else. Victor starts to teach Tony how to shoot with a pistol, and he seems to be able to hit right on the target. Victor is quite impressed by the incredible precision. I didn't shoot. They turn around and find out it was Dixon shooting behind. They hold Rose hostage and force the two to drop their weapon. Dixon looks exciting to finally meet the best hitman in the business. But Victor pretends not to know about his name to humiliate him. Hector Dixon. How do you spell that? Don't mind him. Dixon tells Victor to shoot the girl himself if he wants Tony to be set free, otherwise, all of them will be killed. Victor has no choice but to aim at Rose as told. At that very moment, Victor's mother appears on the balcony and shoots Fabian, turning the situation. While the mother is busy blaming the son, Fabian throws a knife at them before his last breath. Did she say that? Say what? Shit. Just then, Dixon points another gun at Tony, telling everyone to drop their weapons. Victor mentions that the gun is actually the one Rose stole. Goodbye. After the sound of a gunshot, Dixon is the one lying on the ground. Victor then tells Tony that's what happens when you don't clean your weapon. Three years later, Victor and Rose have a son who is playing in the garden. Has anybody seen the cat? The end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and here are another two recommended recaps. Click to check them out. Wish you have a good day until next time.